shadowness have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream, gentles do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. This is Bern, and actually, we are in Prague in the Czech Republic. And this is a little bit more than a vacation. It is also a bit of work uh, trying to put together a book of my interviews with puppeteers across Europe for my Gravity From Above project. And I have a link to that channel, which I will put around here somewhere, so you can uh, find out what that has been about. Meanwhile, I am indeed uh, enjoying my time here. Unfortunately, the virus has struck my uh, editor host over at Lotkarsh magazine, and uh, so she'll be quarantining for a while. I don't know if she has the virus or if she just is quarantined, but she was exposed to someone, so she has to stay away. This is life in 2022. There's no predicting, and if you go into life predicting anything these days, you are going to be sorely disappointed. Anyway, I've got something special to share today. This relates to puppetry. And we are going into the museum of the great uh, Czech filmmaker, Karol Zeman. Karol Zeman. And I'm going to explain more about his work as we go. He did some puppet animation. And he made live action. I say live action because it's a very strange mixture of styles. A uh, wonderful mixture of styles. But... Before we get any further, let me just show you the room I'm staying in here and what my uh, life is like in Prague. I will be giving you, of course, a lot more Prague in this in the near future, but I always have to look for puppets and gargoyles and grotesques on the sides of the wall and old architecture and, well, who knows what I'm going to find. That's what I love about Prague. It's just like... Uh, you know, if you stay in the tourist zone between the Old Town Square, the Charles Bridge, and the castle, you're not going to see it. You're just going to see. Fortunately, actually, though, at this point you can because not a lot of people are here yet. I would say if you come in the next month or two, it's still going to be pretty quiet, but it's going to open up again by the summer. So, anyway, without any further ado, let me show you the room. So this is my room. You can hear it echoing behind me a bit. Not much on the walls. And, uh, you know, the usual bad uh, photo art of a beach for some reason on the uh, wall. Uh, let's go outside and look out the uh, window and you'll see a pretty typical Czech scene. Gray day. Nice courtyard. There's a uh, live jazz club there and uh, it was open last night but I haven't heard any jazz coming from there and this is a little alleyway Prague is filled with little alleyways that go who knows where that and passages that go through buildings often block after block fascinating stuff and cobblestones everywhere is cobblestones here I don't know why anyone rents a scooter here it's an absolutely insane notion great city for walking though and so uh, let's look at it from the other side uh, oh by the way you just saw some water there I keep it outside to keep it cool I love doing that <laughs> Whenever I've been in Europe, they have these big ledges outside the windows, and that's the uh, entrance to the jazz club as seen from below. There's a woman staring at her dog, I believe, and there's the alleyway. So, 
the Karel Zeman Museum. I this was here last time I was here, but I didn't make it there, which is probably just as well. Um, it was quite crowded then. Uh, it was around Christmas time. But this is an amazing glass puppet that's used as animation in one of his films. I'll uh, put the title here. It's, it's slipping me at the moment. But uh, glass animation. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Absolutely incredible stuff. Zeman, uh, his career lasted through the middle of the 20th century. He started off making puppet films, a bit like uh, Yirji Trinka's, but... Um, and here you see, I, I love the texture of these puppets. Of course, I'm always going to go on about texture. And then kind of a comical face. Looks like it was made out of mop parts. <laughs> but also, while comical, if you look at the eyes, there's a kind of a sadness beneath them. And he shares that with Yuzhi Trinka and with other uh, Czech animators as well. This kind of melancholy, kind of funny but sad quality. Uh, one of the things I love about uh, visiting the uh, Czech Republic is just the dark humor. Uh, this is not a culture for everyone, that's for sure. It's, as has been said before, an eccentric culture as opposed to America, which is a more of a concentric culture, everything falls into the middle of America, whereas to really understand the Czech Republic, you have to do some digging. And Prague is the ultimate spot. This is kind of a nice one, a, sort of a circus, uh, what? Uh, I don't know what position that would be, guard, <laughs> entertainer. Look at this uh, giraffe made of different color spots and lovely burlap texture there. Now this is interesting because it shows you how he made his films. There's actually a hanging board painting above the lake. The lake was real and then well, actually the lake in this case is just uh, a loop that was uh, made at this certain lake but then obviously we're looking also at a replica of a woolly mammoth and some uh, toy trees in front of us, model trees. And this is the kind of thing he often did in his films, was to create these strange sense of illusion for <laughs> no money at all. They didn't have money for Hollywood, but I love they would shoot through the board and they would end up with... Uh, this odd effect. His films are filled with this odd effect. That was from, and this is from, uh, A Journey to the Beginning of Time. And uh, this is obviously some sort of prehistoric insect. And it's kind of scary, <laughs> kind of bizarre. But that's the thing, is that uh, his, his films all have this homemade quality to them. Now, this is from his... Uh, Jules Verne adventure and one of the things that's really amazing about this was he was really inspired by Gustave Doré the great French uh, engraver and so everything has lines in it like Gustave Doré I love this attention to detail this uh, I mean every everything has painted lines on it I mean just fantastic <laughs> And here, of course, you see uh, one of the gizmos that makes the submarine work. It's a, it's not any specific Jules Verne story. It's kind of a mishmash of the mysterious island uh, and um, some of his uh, balloon adventures and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And this is actually what <laughs> the submarine kind of looked like, which is really fascinating. This weird, and it's a puppet submarine, so you'd see these images of the submarine in the movie, and they always look like this, like they were these strange hand-painted toys. It, just absolutely one-of-a-kind imagination. Unfortunately, he only made about six or seven bigger-budget films, and 
they kind of took away his uh, license to make them, and so he made a lot of shorter films after that. And there's a little uh, model animated scuba diver, or what are those? Uh, diving helmet. What do you call a person? I guess it's still... No, it's not really a scuba diver, because that's uh, self-contained. And this is also from the same movie. Uh, and again, you can see all the lines running through it. Strange invention for flying. And I just find this stuff fascinating, because he's taking... Jules Verne and moving it one step further into to art. I mean, the Jules Verne ideas were already their very unique uh, designs, but by adding the Doré lines, uh, like these are all engravings, it just takes it one step further into a strange sort of obsessive quality that makes it really fascinating. Again, everything filled with lines, which looks really interesting when you watch the film. <laughs> now, these are actually costumes from his Baron Munchausen piece, uh, Baron Pragil, or something like that. I, I'm not looking at the check word in front of me. And they have a an optical illusion here. Uh, you're looking at the horse that one of the people ride on. But then if you back up... You can put the two together, and uh, it's an optical illusion for uh, the horse in different places. This is how he did m much of his work, by putting these pieces of cardboard in front of one thing in front of another to give it this optical illusion. And here's some of the costumes from his Baron Munchausen. Pretty amazing stuff, I must say. And now we're going through, I think this was his Arabian Nights film. And this is what he did. He painted these cardboard cutouts, and you'd walk through them. It gives the illusion of depth. You just don't make sure you don't turn the camera. Then, you, But what's nice is in the museum, you just walk through to another room. And here's, oh, what is this, a zoescope? Uh, or is it a praxinoscope? It's one of these old pre-movie devices and it gives the illusion the individual pictures of movement which is exactly how film works uh, you need that little space so there you are the work and museum of Karel Zeman and you really should look for this museum it's right as you're getting off of the Charles Bridge on the castle side of the Voltava River. And it is worth a view, and if you have children, they will love it too. On my way out, uh, I met a uh, lovely uh, woman, young woman, who was, uh, she was both running the gift store and she took my tickets at the beginning because there weren't many people there. She actually had the door locked and then saw me coming and ran over. She was sitting across the way in a cafe. Came over and uh, then uh, was in the gift store where I found some incredible books. And I'm going to show you those books in just a moment. And uh, they are... Uh, I was uh, kind of in hog heaven. They had great uh, Czech animation... Uh, DVDs there, and they had wonderful uh, books, uh, stuff by Carol Zeman and Jan Schwankmeyer. I found a Jan Schwankmeyer Alice in Wonderland book. Now, this was actually in English. I think there were two different copies, because when I first picked it up, I remember looking at it in, uh, reading it in Czech, saying, eh, it doesn't matter, I know the story. Then I picked up a copy, and, and then when I got home, and it was in English, unless Prague magically vanished the Czech words and made me able to read it. No, I think what happens is they, they tend to do two different, uh, 
two different versions of a book, one in English, one in Czech, just because who reads Czech <laughs> except the Czechs? Although I will say the Czech uh, literary culture is amazing. I mean, there are probably more quality bookstores here than I've almost seen anywhere uh, outside of maybe Oxford uh, in uh, the UK. So, uh, well, let's get out of here. Uh, we will be back. I found an absolutely amazing little store I want to show you. And I went up to the Powder Gate Tower, which I had never done before. and was stunned by not only the view up there, but the whole uh, place. And I'm going to investigate more of the tower. So those are two episodes coming up in the not-too-distant future. Also, I'm thinking of doing one on just the weird statues I keep finding here. There's just endless, and things people just don't even see. <laughs> so, uh, well, as they say here in the Czech Republic, nasledano, which means goodbye. But since we're friends, we can just say ahoy. Thank <laughs> you.